Hi, this is Stacey Chalemi from The Advisor. Today, I'm so excited because we have a very special guest. This is Danny Carroll, and he has an amazing book that he just recently published. It's Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis. And he's going to talk about that book, and he's going to talk about a lot of things that are really important to society pertaining to cancer. So I'm going to give the stage right to Danny, and he's going to take it away, tell you a little about himself and all the knowledge that he has that he's gained throughout the years to help people understand and to also have a different view on cancer. So Danny, take it away. Thank you, Stacey. It's a pleasure to be here. So I, I, live, in, uh, I live in Bombay, India. Um, I grew up in the UK, as you might guess from my accent. I grew up in London, um, but I moved to India um, over 27 years ago in the mid 1990s and i've lived here ever since right so <clears throat> i'm not a doctor uh until 2005 i had no history in um in either alternative or conventional medicine in fact um, i'm a lawyer by profession uh, and i've spent my life working in management consulting asset management and venture capital um I have spent the last 18 years uh, studying uh, pretty much every uh, healing modality that I could find. Um, my, my journey into this world started in 2005, 2004, 2005. I sort of lose track of time a little bit. But uh, anyway, it was in the, in the, mid, in the mid-2000s. Um, I, had a, I had a friend um, who was... Uh, uh, diagnosed with cancer and she didn't have um, she didn't have the money to to do the cancer treatment she had no insurance now in India we have well, now 1.4 billion people um, mm. value of life here is zero people if you don't have money people will happily step over you in the streets if you're dying on the pavement right so um, so I ran a I ran a marathon um, and I raised a lot of money for her cancer treatment. Um, when she went into hospital, although they said she had cancer, uh, she looked pretty fine to me, right? Um, mm -hmm. And she started chemotherapy treatments. And she used to message me from hospital saying, Danny, I don't know what these doctors are doing, but it feels like they're putting poison in my veins, right? Um, now, obviously, they were, right? I mean, they were putting mustard gas in her in her veins um, at the time I knew no better so I strongly encouraged her to continue the treatments and basically she had three rounds of chemo and she died oh, um, yeah so I mean I was beyond devastated at the time um, you know I funded treatment I ensured compliance to the treatment <clears throat> So in my mind, I was good as killed her, right? So um, anyway, that wasn't a great start. Um, but at the time when she when she died, um, I would have been, what, in my mid-30s? Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> working in asset management and management consulting at that point. Um, so I said to myself, I'm going to search the ends of the earth to find a better solution to this problem called cancer i.e i'm going to go and find a cure for cancer um as you do right when you're in your mid-30s and you're a lawyer by profession and practicing in asset management um so i start i started i started studying uh pretty much everything that moved right i mean everything that had a promise of a solution i started studying i studied nutritional healing for i don't know probably 10 years uh, I tried every diet in town. Uh, I turned vegan for five years. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I went on Atkins for a year um, mm -hmm. and pretty much everything in between. Um, I, studied, uh, I studied the Bark Flower Remedies, which is an English emotional healing therapy. Mm -hmm. um, I studied energy healing. I studied spiritual healing. But this is a problem I faced, Stacey, was that... Um, you know, I had I, I was constantly in a situation where I had two people, same diagnosis, and you put them on the same protocols, and one lives and one dies, right? And and regardless of, I mean, I I was I was one of those awfully annoying children, 
um, who would always say, why, 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 why? I'm just drove my parents nuts, right? So, and <laughs> it, has, it, hasn't, it hasn't really changed, right? I'm still very annoying, um, still continuously question why, 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 why? So he was out, yeah, Danny, it happens. Yeah, you know, some people die, some people live. And, and I'm like, no, it's not, a, I'm not happy with that answer, right? I need, I need to find, there's something I'm missing. Right. And I don't know what I don't know what I'm missing, but I'm missing something. I mean, you go on if you go online, you'll see. Uh, I think 2010, I did like a, a TED presentation on uh, on nutritional healing. So you can see I was down I was down that rabbit hole at that point in time, right? Um, yeah. And at, frankly, at the time, it was really the only game in town that had any real sort of promise to it, right? Um, right. So I spent a long time down that rabbit hole. Um, <clears throat> Then what happened is in 2012, I had a I had a, a, a cathartic healing experience. Um, for six months, I had uh, golf ball sized knots in my entire body. Right, I mean, I'm talking my calves, my thighs, my back, my arms. You could see like these great big golf oh, balls, wow. right? And I, ha- I mean, I was I'm a keen marathon runner, and at this point in time, I could barely walk, let alone run. Um, wow. so I was in physio. I don't know whether you've ever had knots ironed out of your muscles in physio, but what they basically do is they, they use their elbows, right? And then they, <laughs> and they iron, they iron, they iron the muscles out. I can laugh about it now, right? I was yeah. not laugh. I was not laughing at the time, right? Cause it's excruciating, it's excruciatingly painful. Right. And, and you come out and all your muscles are bruised and that way you've had some big dude with his elbows in your in your muscles right so um so yeah then i go back two days later and, and all of the knots have come back again right so i'm on this ex- i'm on this excruciating merry-go-round for, for like a six month period yeah and I had no idea. I, I couldn't. I, I everything I was studying at that, whether it was bark flower remedies or all the energy, spiritual healing, nutritional healing, all everything I was, I couldn't solve this problem. Right. Um, anyway, I had a I had an interesting challenge in my life at that point. Um, I was dating an American diplomat um, who'd been posted to Bombay for two years. I'd split up with my ex-wife in 2011. Um, Mm -hmm. I was in a new relationship, um, but her next posting was in Santiago de Chile. Okay, Mm. so nobody in their right mind is going to have a relationship between South America and Southeast Asia. Right. So we agreed that when she left Bombay, that uh, that we would terminate our relationship. Um, but the problem was, Stacey, that uh, because, I mean, you know, when you're in a, in a relationship, no expectations, no pressure, nothing. Right. I mean, it, it creates an environment where you can where you can generate extraordinarily strong bonds. And we'd be, we'd become soulmates. Right. In in the period that she was here. Um, so the weekend before she was due to leave, um, we sat down on a Friday evening and we had a we had a turkey talk, right? We had a candid discussion about life, and we we jointly concluded that uh, it was not possible for us to terminate our relationship at that point in time, so that we would try this ridiculous long distance relationship between South America and Southeast Asia, as you do, right? Um, <laughs> And uh, see if it fizzled out naturally, right? So uh, when I woke up on Saturday morning, all of the all of the knots in my muscles had magically disappeared, right? Gone overnight, just. And I'm like, wow, what could have done that, right? And the only difference between Friday night and Saturday morning was my girlfriend and I sitting down and uh, and agreeing that we wouldn't terminate our relationship. So I mean, why fast forward? Uh, many many years of studying um and what i later discovered is i mean at the time i didn't know why they came and why they left right i mean but fast forward uh, a few years of of studying new medical discoveries and i and i learned that the knots essentially came in my body because nature was trying to slow me down from going in the wrong direction right so I was planning to terminate a relationship with the most amazing woman I've ever met in my life, right? Who, who was my soulmate at the time. 
um, uh, and FYI, I'm is now my wife um, and still my soulmate. Um, so now it seems that nature knew what he was doing, right? So it was trying to slow me down from essentially running away from from my from my partner. And once we agreed we wouldn't terminate the relationship, all of the knots just just disappeared, right? Right. So what I, what I learned from that was it was a very important lesson to learn the the very powerful connection between the mind and the body right all i knew was that my mind essentially had crippled me for a six month period and right. then gifted me back my health bang just like this right so i mean that was it was such a such a powerful insight into how we actually function biologically um, yeah. So I was planning to do a PhD and I was looking for a university that uh, that had a strong medical and psychology specialization. And I was planning to build a bridge between the, the two modalities. Um, so in the process of looking for this university, um, I found this this German medical doctor who was reported to have a, a 92 percent success rate healing terminally ill cancer patients with a form of mind body healing right so i'm like wow i think i need to look into this right so um <clears throat> here's a funny here's a funny one um having spent already many years studying um alternative healing modalities um mm -hmm. what i'd learned along the journey is that the more the more potent the modality was um, typically the more vitriol you will find, you know, online. Um, and when I when I started looking for this modality, um, there was an extraordinary amount of vitriol, um, which for me was a lead indicator that there's that there's value under the hood, right? Right. Um, so I'm like, okay, uh, uh, this has all of the signs of exactly what I was looking for. So yeah. and then, yeah, you go online and he's an anti-Semite murderer, yada yada, all all this sort of stuff, right? Which I'm, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with Health Nut News, right? So, you know, the the website that traces and tracks all of the mysterious um, suicides of cancer researchers and and alternative medical practitioners, right? I mean, all those strange situations where people commit suicide by sort of shooting themselves in the, in the head twice and then hanging themselves or stuff like that. Oh, crazy stuff, right? Which obviously is not suicide. Right. Um, <clears throat> so with this doctor, the vitriol was just off the charts, right? I mean, unbelievable. And I'm like, oh, okay, there is definitely value under the hood, right? So um, I've now been studying that uh, that modality, studying and testing it for the last 11 years i have a when 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 people come to me for help i have a i have a very uh simple approach that you should never believe anything anybody ever tells you so whatever i'm saying today you shouldn't believe what i'm saying right if you find something that if you find something that's um sounds interesting and worth exploring yes. be skeptical be skeptical you know stay 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 cynical in a in a in a point where until until you can enjoy personal experience from using new knowledge to solve health problems you shouldn't believe what anybody says including me right and right. that's the approach that's the approach i take and that's the approach i i i recommend to everybody else right go in with an open mind study something but stay skeptical throughout the entire process don't believe anything in, until you experience it right mm -hmm. now this german doctor has a, has a fascinating story um so he's a he was a traditional medical doctor his name's uh, his name's dr rickard geert hummer um he he developed uh, over the course of his lifetime he developed a, a new healing modality called germanic healing knowledge which used to be called germanic new medicine OK, mm -hmm. now the way he discovered this, um, he was actually the youngest medical doctor to ever qualify to practice medicine in Germany. Right. So he is the sharpest tool in the kit. Right? He's one of he's one of these type of characters. And, and as a medical practitioner, he specialized in what they, in, in internal medicine, um, which basically means research 
and his yeah. specialization was cancer research, right? Mm -hmm. 1978, his 19 year old son was shot and murdered. Oh my goodness. Yeah, can you imagine, right? Oh. Two months after his son is shot and murdered, um, he was diagnosed with an aggressive form of rare testicular cancer called a testicular teratoma, right? Wow. With what they call metastasis to the stomach. Now, mm -hmm. at the time, he was a he was a traditional medical doctor. He couldn't help. I mean, he was in his late forties. Otherwise, he was a healthy guy, right? All right. of a sudden, his son his son's murdered, and two months after his son's murdered, he gets cancer on a reproductive organ. Right, and wow. he's like, eh, this can't be a coincidence, right? Anyway, yeah. he was given a one percent chance to survive. He survived because he he had a testicle removed and he had part of his stomach removed, but he didn't take chemotherapy or radiation, which I understand is the decision of most medical doctors. So you can do your own research and find out, right? Right. So when he recovered from surgery. Uh, he was the he was the cancer research head um, at a German university related to uh, Munich University, and he was the head of the gynecological oncology cancer research unit. And he was working with two hundred late stage female cancer patients, um, mm -hmm. and he started to interview them to find out whether they'd gone through some form of life crisis or emotional trauma before yeah. they got cancer and out of 200 200 had right yes. and when he, and when he started putting them into separate categories women with ovarian cancer or cervical cancer or mammary gland breast cancer what he started to observe is that the women in the same category had all suffered from the same type of emotional trauma so the women, the women who had ovarian cancer had all suffered from some form of profound loss in the same way that he suffered a profound loss when his son was murdered. Oh, wow. um, or, or the women who all had mammary gland cancer all had some sort of what he described as like a care or a nest conflict, you know, like some major problem at home, children, husband, whatever. Okay. So what? So fast forward thirty nine years of research, working directly with over fifty thousand patients along the course of his journey, and what he basically concluded, Stacy, is that every biological change in our body, whether it's a runny nose or a sore throat or a cough or a cold or a cancer or an osteoporosis or an arthritis or a heart attack or anything any 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 and every change in our biology including cancer basically is part of a survival biological program wow okay so mm -hmm. how did he come to that conclusion so his starting point when 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 he started studying the testicular cancer that he had experienced what he discovered is that the tumor that that grew on his testicle had a had a had a biological function and a biological purpose okay what is the test what is the biological purpose of the testicle it's to produce testosterone and sperm right so that so that as a species we can procreate Okay, okay, so in his case, his 19 year old son was shot and murdered. Um, so what nature uh, essentially did was increase the size of his testicle so that he could increase the amount of sperm and testosterone that he was producing to give him a greater capacity to be able to get his wife pregnant so that he could replace the child he just lost. This is the survival function when it comes to the testicle. Right yeah. now, let, let's take a let's take a female example. If we take mammary gland breast cancer, okay. So, what what Dr. Hummer discovered with the with it. so if you look at you look at any you look at any part of the body, all you have to do is look at the biological purpose of of that of that of that organ or that function, right? So, the mammary gland, the biological purpose is to lactate, right, to to produce milk. OK, now a woman only gets only lactates when she's either pregnant 
um, or nursing, right? As soon as she stops nursing, then then the mammary glands will dry up and she'll stop lactating. Okay, right. now you picture you picture this you picture this example, right? You're walking along the street and you're talking to your friend and you have a five year old child holding your hand, right? And you're yes. ch- you're chatting and you're not paying attention, whatever. And all of a sudden, the child pulls away from you, runs mm. into the road and gets hit by a car. And ends up in in ICU, right? Now, before our modern day society, Stacey, uh, the only tool a woman had to nurse a sick loved one basically was her breast, right? But now the child is the child is five years old, so she's no longer lactating, right? She shouldn't be. Okay. Now, what does nature what does nature do in this situation? Right? The child's been hit by, by a car, ends up in ICU. The woman now has a sick child in ICU that she needs to help that child to get back to recover its health, right? So in the same way, nature increased the size of Dr. Hummer's testicle in order to increase his sperm and testosterone production. What nature will do is reactivate the mammary gland so that the woman can breastfeed the child, offer a breast to the child, so she can nurse the child back to health again. Okay, so what will happen is as soon as the child gets hit by the car, um, very soon afterwards, the woman's going to start feeling a lump in her breast. Okay, now that lump in the breast is basically nature reactivating the mammary glands so that she can lactate, so that she can offer a breast to the child, so she can nurse the sick child back to health again. Okay. Now, once the child has regained its health, then the purpose of that biological program would have been achieved. And in the same way that when you stop breastfeeding after you finish nursing, the lactation just switches off. Then in in the breast, the same thing will happen again. Right. If Dr. Hummer had had got his wife pregnant, then the purpose of that biological program would have been fulfilled. And yes. then nat- nature would have said, okay, problem solved. Ding, switch to switch off. Same switch that switches it on, switches it back off again. And right. the, that extra capacity that was added to the testicle would have been removed, shifted out the system, and then his testicles would have reverted back to the original size. In the same way, once the child regains its health, then mm-hmm. basically that biological program would have got switched off. Now, that's that lump in the breast of the mammary gland getting reactivated is today what we call a mammary gland cancer or a globular cancer, right? And so what do we do? We chop the woman's breasts off and whatever, give her chemotherapy and radiation in in a vast majority of cases. Yeah, you know, we kill them, right? So mm-hmm. if it it doesn't matter, right? What if that if that woman chops her breasts off right and has chemotherapy whilst that child is still unwell that biological program is going to continue to run okay so you can chop your breasts off it makes no difference right in 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 conventional medicine we have this concept called um, recurrent breast cancer okay now recurrent breast cancer is where a woman has a, a mastectomy and she has a breast removed and she gets cancer on the breast is no longer there Mm -hmm. okay now if you want to understand more how this process works basically if we have this concept in conventional medicine called phantom limb pain right now phantom limb pain is basically i get gangrene in my in my foot right so i chop my i chop my leg off from below the knee let's say for example right after mm-hmm. I've after I've removed, after I've had my my foot and my leg chopped off, I still feel pain in the foot that is no longer there. Right. Okay. Cleveland Clinic did a a study. Eight out of ten people who have organs removed still feel pain even after the organ is no longer there. Okay. So right. how does how is that possible? How can you feel pain in a limb? It's no longer there, right? I mean, it sounds absurd, right? But that's the way it works, okay? Mm-hmm. And the and the reason why that works is because the pain is not in the limb, okay? The pain 
is in the brain. Yes. The, bio, the biological program that manages this entire system basically is in our brain, right? So in the woman's in the woman's situation where she's walking with a child, the child pulling away and getting hit by the car mm -hmm. is, the, is the cause of the lump in her breast, right? So right. the child gets hit by the car and then you go, she looks, she sees the child laying in the road, right? The shock of the unexpected shock of the child getting hit by the car basically hits the brain and the brain mm -hmm. says oh no crisis we have a we have a sick child right activate the the milk production system so that you can offer your breast to the child and you can nurse the child back to health again right okay? the cause of the problem is the child getting hit by the car okay the processing of the problem happens in the brain the organ yeah. is just the symptom of the problem mm -hmm. okay now in business first day you go into business the first thing they teach you is that you can never solve a problem by addressing the symptom of the problem you can only ever address a problem by by addressing the cause of the problem right okay so in this particular case the cause of the problem is a, is that the child has been hit by a car and is now sick okay mm -hmm. processing happens in the brain the symptom is the brain sends a signal to the breast saying okay Let's get milk production going again. We need it, right? We need it right. to nurse a child back to health again. So the organ is just a symptom. You can never solve a problem by addressing the symptom. So if you right. have the le if you have the leg cut off, you still get the pain in the leg because it's in your brain, right? Right. If you mm -hmm. if you have your if you have your breast removed, it makes zero difference. I mean, all it does is is it prevents the biological solution of you offering your breast to the child, right? In order to nurse the child back to health again. Okay. You take the chemotherapy, makes zero difference. You take the radiation, makes zero difference. You go on a vegan diet, it makes zero difference. Whilst that child is sick, that biological program in your brain is going to keep running. Okay. You can run around new york with your underwear on your head and it's going to make no difference whatsoever until unless and until that child gets well again when the child gets well again then that program will switch off because mm -hmm. the biological purpose of that program has been fulfilled okay now the mistake the the, the place where this gets really messy is i'll oh, whatever i've had my breast removed i'll go on a vegan diet and then in in the process of me going through all of this crazy stuff right um the, the child gets well again i go oh, yeah 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 i uh, i i fixed the problem because i had my breast removed and i went on a vegan diet or i did you know whatever pick whatever modality you want to pick right it's right. It, this is this is not causal right it's, it's, it, this is this happenstance right i mean you can do what you can do what you like until that child is well again that program that enables the mother to produce milk is going to keep on running when the right. child gets when the child gets better again then the purpose of that program has been fulfilled and it will switch off naturally but people right. think it gets switched off because i did the chemo or because i had my breast removed or i did the vegan diet or i did whatever modality you think um is going to solve the problem and all of those are, are symptomatic treatment okay the 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 nutritional healing is going to detox the body right it's not the cause of the problem the cause of the problem is the fact the child got hit by a car is now in hospital right that's mm -hmm. the problem we have to solve right if we if we want if we no longer want the breast to lactate and or to have this lump in the breast right i mean the only way to remove the lump in the breast is for the child to get well again mm -hmm. okay so what I uh, after now nearly two decades of of studying these modalities in in the end what I what I used to do is to look at the modality and my my only assessment is was it a was it a, was it a, a a modality that um that treated the symptom or was mm -hmm. it a modality that treated the cause of the problem because you right. can only solve the problem by addressing the cause of the problem you can also only heal yourself right. Right. The only the only person who can solve the problem of the child getting hit by the car is the mother, right? Until she right. solves the problem of the child being sick, the lump mm -hmm. is going to be there in the breast. So 
we can only heal ourselves and we can only heal ourselves by addressing the cause of the problem. And the only, in 20 years, the only modality I've found that basically um, will, uh, that, that gives you the cause of the problem, mm -hmm. whether sniper's rifle, i.e. is a causal therapy, is this modality, Germanic healing knowledge, or Germanic new medicine. It was, it was renamed, I think, in about 2010. Um, Dr. Hummer wanted to take the word medicine out of it because there is no medicine, right? I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a causal therapy to help you to learn to heal yourself, and there's there's no medicine involved. So he he took the word medicine out of it and he re he renamed it. In German, it's called Germanisch Heilkund, right? So now, I, shall I give you some of my personal healing experiences so you can so you can understand? The journey that I've been on in terms of how I've learned to heal myself is, is, is that a good place to go? I think my audience would love to hear that because I think when we hear stories and we hear about other people's experiences, it makes it more uh, understandable and more real. You know, it, it's not just a theory; it's actually other people going through an, an experience and and the it, that's related to what we just spoke about. So please share your stories with us. Okay, so let's go. Let's go back to my first uh, my first experience of using this knowledge. Um, it was in twenty fifteen. Um, uh, I was on my. I, I hadn't. I hadn't studied my practitioner's course at that point, so I didn't. I, I I'd been studying. I'd spent by that part by that point about three years studying the theory of this of this modality. But I was on my 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 uh, my teacher was in Toronto, so I was on mm -hmm. my way to I was on my way to Toronto in order to take my practitioner's course so I could learn how to use this modality. Right, right. Um, uh, my my then girlfriend um, and soon to be fiance flew from Chile to London, and I flew from Bombay to London, um, and we met in my in my parents' house. Who uh, my parents lived in London at that point. Um, and uh, within six hours of being on the ground, I got really, really sick. I mean, I, I had the worst crippling stomach cramps I've ever experienced in my life. And I was literally on the toilet every hour for 72 hours. Right. I mean, it, I was I was passing out on the toilet with stomach cramps. They were so bad. And um, my uh, my girlfriend said, "Come on, let's." We were laying on the bed in my parents' house, and my my girlfriend said, "You know, let's see if we can use this this uh, this medical knowledge that you've been studying. Let's see if we can use it to solve the problem." So mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, we we can we can try, right? I mean, I've not done my practitioner's course yet. I don't really know how to use it, but anyway, mm -hmm. let's let's give it a try anyway, right?" So, um, we were laying on the bed, and she said to me, "Okay." what conflict causes pain in the stomach and i said well i mean for the most part is something called indigestible anger it's a it's a it's a problem of anger that you can't solve and she said uh, when when does the pain start i said well when you solve the problem so she said what problem have we solved by coming to england and i'm like oh, i don't know mm -hmm. i mean we we landed we landed in london uh, my parents called over all my family. Uh, we we had a big party in the back garden. We all got merrily drunk and had a fabulous time. It was a beautiful sunny day in London, which is quite rare. Um, so there was no there was no family conflict to point to to say, yeah, yeah, this is the problem we resolved, right? So I'm laying on the bed and we laid there for an hour and like, okay, let's work out the problem. And I, I really don't know, yeah. Um, and then I was laying there and then all of a sudden the penny dropped. Right. And my 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 ex-wife and my family didn't get on well at all. Right. I mean, they didn't like her. She didn't like them. And it was really like a rock and a hard place. Right. I mean, it was really difficult managing that dysfunctional relationship between your family and your life partner. Right. I mean, it's not a it's not a fun place. It's not a fun place to be. Right. I mean, so. um I was laying on the bed and I was still folded in half with crippling stomach cramps. And I was laying on the, I'm laying on the bed, Stacey, and, uh, and I said, I think I've found the problem that we've solved. And she said, what is it? And I said, 
I think the problem is that uh, we've solved is that my partner fights with my family, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm laying there, and all of a sudden, when I said the magic words, my stomach went diggly diggly diggly. Okay, poof, gone, right? And I laid there, and I said to my girlfriend, uh, the pain just went. She said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "I don't know." My stomach just went diggly diggly diggly, and the pain just went. Right? She said, come on, don't be stupid. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I told you I don't know how to do this, right? <laughs> so she said, okay, come on, let's let's lay there for another hour, right? And see if it comes back. And and I would lay there for an hour, and I think lay there for two hours, nothing. One day, nothing, two days, nothing, three days, nothing. Now eight years, nothing, right? Never come right. back. He just he just he just as soon as I as soon as I identified the cause of the problem one of the other extraordinary discoveries that this met that this german doctor made is that uh, number one your conscious mind can overrule your subconscious mind right all these all these biological programs they run in your subconscious mind you know when your child gets hit by a car you don't sit there and say oh let me grow a lump in my breast so i can start laxating again right so i can breastfeed my child and get child healthy again right and yes. you don't do that yeah yeah, it's crazy, right? I mean, all mm -hmm. of the it, these are these are survival biological programs that are wired in your subconscious mind, right? And as soon right. as you hear, as soon as you hear a crisis in life, then you know nature says, right, okay, we need to up capacity over here, down capacity over here, and it adjusts according to its environment in order to help you overcome that problem, right? Right. So, so what this doctor discovered is that when you consciously connect the cause of the problem. My, wife, my partner fighting with my family and you yeah. connect it with the symptoms of the problem the crippling stomach cramps basically you can switch it off like a light switch right yeah it's it's the most extraordinary cathartic healing experience that you can ever go through right right so, so this is this is this is my first experience that i that i had using this modality i mean i was close to cancelling my trip to toronto right because i mean literally i i couldn't be away from the toilet for more than an hour right, right. um so that was that was my that was my first experience okay um in 2019 i got uh, i got cancer in my jaw here oh my goodness. okay so i had a i had a big tumor growing on my jaw um by this time, I'm very, very well versed with this modality, right? But, um, but pretty well, anyway. Um, and for the life of me, I couldn't find out what caused this problem. Um, it's a little difficult area because it's got what we call all three germ layers here. Uh, so yes. it, the problem could have started because I solved a problem or the problem could have started because I had a problem. Right. So it could be either. Then you've got to go through a process of trial and error and say, did that happen? Could that happen? Did that happen? Um, anyway, it I, when I found it in the end, it turned out that it was a five second fight that I had with my with my wife, actually over American politics, strangely. But anyway, um, <laughs> you get those things, right? It happens. Yeah. When, when, when you have a, you know, when you have a liberal conservative and a <laughs> a, a liberal on the other end of the scale then it causes problems right but anyway um so but anyway by the time i by the time i so i'm so i i found that so once i found the cause of this cancer then then i have the magic key right so then i could switch that cancer i could switch that cancer off so um i said to my jaw okay i know that this is caused by the fight i have with my wife then and once i connect in the same way i did with the stomach once I connected, mm -hmm. when I once I connected the cause of the problem and the symptom of the problem, the tumor growing in my jaw, then I switched that I switched that cancer off, right? So now this particular part of the jaw, um, the, so a, a lot of a lot of our our body functions very similar to a menstrual cycle, right? So what happens is tissues added and then tissues removed, right? Or tissues removed and tissues added. I mean, in a menstrual cycle, in the first part of the cycle, tissues added to the walls of the uterus. To facilitate pregnancy if you don't get pregnant then it's removed with bleeding right so tissue plus right. tissue minus tissue plus, and, and all all of our germ layers operate in a it's either tissue minus and tissue plus or tissue plus and tissue minus in this particular area it was tissue plus 
but then then you need a tissue minus to remove the big tumor out of my jaw, right? So right. Um, this particular area, uh, the tissue is removed with something called TB mycobacteria. Okay. okay. Doctors, and that's believed to be a disease today, but it's not, right? So this is the, the, the tissue plus is when the tumor was added and the tissue minus is removed by the TB mycobacteria. Um, okay. So the way TB mycobacteria works is it actually rots the flesh to remove the tissue, right? So I had to taste and smell of rotting flesh in my in my mouth and my sinuses for four months. Oh, right? wow. Literally where, literally where the, the skin, the tumor was rotting in my jaw, right? So, yeah. so I had I had that taste and smell for four months. That is not very pleasant, Stacey, I no, can promise you. Not <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> it's not very pleasant. Right? <laughs> now, what happened um, between the tumor on my jaw and the TB mycobacteria rotting the flesh, basically what happened is all my teeth fell out, right? And, and my jaw oh. got destroyed. Yes. Right? So anyway, I let the I let the TB mycobacteria do its job. All my teeth fell out. Um, my jaw was destroyed. And I ended up having to have a five-hour reconstructive surgery on my jaw, right? Because I, I, had, I had no teeth on there. All of these yeah. teeth are false, right? These are, right. Yeah, these are all false teeth, right? That I had, that I had to have put back oh, in so. <laughs> <laughs> they did a job right so, <laughs> so um so i had this i had this five hour surgery um i had um i had one painkiller at the time of the surgery and then i had another painkiller at the at the in the night before i slept and then of course i wake up next morning you got the bum 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 some somebody with a sledgehammer on the side of your face right slamming the side of you i mean i had a five-hour surgery i had a bone graft to rebuild right. my jaw and then i had uh, implants put in in order to facilitate having my teeth replaced um, yeah 35 stitches whatever um you know unpleasant right but it happens um so next morning i woke up and i i now I like this IBS, right? Where I this, I was one minute I'm in crippling pain, next minute I just switch it off like a light switch, right? People yeah. probably think people probably think I'm nuts here, yeah, but anyway, I mean it is what it is, yeah. Every any anybody anybody can learn to do this, right? I'm not a doctor, remember. So anyway, um, next morning I wake up and I thought to myself, mm, I wonder if I can, I wonder if I can switch off this pain in the same way I've switched off pain from bad back or. You know, uh, 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 IBS or ulcerative colitis or rheumatoid arthritis. I mean, I switched all of these pains up, right? And I'm thinking, but I'd never switched off a pain um, from um, from physical trauma, right. right? So I'm thinking to myself, okay, let's have a let's have a go at this, right? I, I just hate taking painkillers. Yeah, I mean, I do anything I can to not take them. Right. Um, so I thought to myself, what is the biological purpose of pain? OK, now the biological purpose of pain is to stop you using something so that it has the time, space and energy to heal. Right. This you can test for yourself. Right. If you if you cut your finger in the kitchen. Right. When it when it swells up. If you don't touch it. You don't use it. Right. You won't feel a bit of pain in that finger. Right. Mm -hmm. It's healing when it's all swollen and stuff. Right. Just don't touch it. No pain. OK, now you take that finger and you put it into a bowl of hot water to, to do the dishes and all of a sudden you go, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, right? What nature is saying is stop using this. It's broken, right? Yeah. We need to do we need to do repairs and maintenance. So don't use it until it's healed and then you can use it again. Right. I mean, you can't right. you can't service a car with the engines running. Right. You've got to switch the engine off to service the car. Same with us. Right. So you can't use it whilst it's healing. OK, yeah. now in my jaw, I'm sitting there thinking, right, I've got no teeth. Right. So I'm not I'm not going to be chewing anything on this side. Right. Because I've got no teeth. Right. So yeah. um, I'm sitting there thinking, OK, I've got no teeth. Right. OK. Purpose of pain is to give it a time, space and energy. Right? I'm going to give it a time, space and energy. I can't chew because I've got no teeth. Right. So. Right. Um, so I basically I said I said okay let me let me give this a go. So I said to my uh, I said to my subconscious mind, okay, I know that the purpose of pain is to give something a time, space, and energy to heal. 
Um, mm -hmm. I have no teeth. I'm not going to use the side of my mouth. Right. Because I've got no teeth. Please switch off the pain. Bang. Pain gone. Just gone. Bang. Like this, right? And then I I I slept, I slept, Stacy, for 20 hours a day for three weeks, whilst my jaw was healing, right? Literally, I'd get up, go to the bathroom, have a bite to eat, go back to sleep again. Right? No, did that for three weeks. Now, what happened is periodically by accident, yeah, you're chewing food on one side and sometimes it accidentally goes down, down to the other side where you're uh, where I had the surgery, right? And of course, as soon as the food went round that side, then I've broken the deal, right? The deal is you can't use it. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So as soon as the food went round the other side, and it ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, okay, and I'm like, oops. Yeah. Sorry, subconscious mind. That was an accident. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then let's go back to the original deal. I will not use the side of my mouth. I'll give it time, space, and energy to heal. Please switch off the pain. Bang. Pain gone. Okay. Right. So I went for a I went for a five hour reconstructive surgery, no antibiotics, mm -hmm. no pa two painkillers on the day of the surgery. And then I right. went through the complete the complete healing of that jaw with no painkillers and no pain. Wow. Okay. And then I went back to the doctor after three weeks to have these 35 stitches taken out. And uh, and he had completely healed, and he was absolutely gobsmacked. Wow, that's amazing. You know, I I feel like our bodies. You know, when we get pain or we get any type of symptoms, it's always because our bodies are trying to communicate. There's something wrong, and it's our brain sending messages to our 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 body, or our body actually sending messages to our brain, and then our brain reacts, and then we get you know, some sort of symptom, either inflammation or pain or whatever the the cause may be, you know, like you were talking about lumps and you were talking about cancer and you and so forth, you know, our body is reacting and it's sending messages to the brain and the brain is trying to, like you said, heal the body, you know, it's trying to compensate and what it knows. And, um, you know, I feel like people don't realize, but 70% of illnesses are caused by stress and when you were speaking and you were talking about emotions and you were using the example of of the child you know um a lot of times you know those unsettling emotions can cause these illnesses and it's learning how to really cope with these emotions that we go through in life because it, it, in the long run you know even in the short term we could be causing illnesses in our body because we're not able to cope with the emotions or with the situation in our environment around us that's going on at that moment how do you feel about that so yeah i mean in in the same in the same way in the same way that when the you know the trunk of the tree is rubbing on the fence right the, the bark becomes thicker right? right um or the you know the tree in in the woodland you know shoots up to the sky in order to because it needs that to survive right i mean yeah. we we yeah nature wants us to survive right mm -hmm. and nature's design is extraordinary the only problem is we don't understand it okay yeah so in the same way the tree shoots up to the to the sky in order to get sunlight to survive these are all survival programs and when we see that happening in nature i mean we don't question it right you can see oh yeah yeah the tree is going to shoot up to the sky in order to be able to survive in that environment right right but this is it's exactly the same for us, right? When uh, when when the child gets hit by the car, the mother the mother needs to be able to to nurse the child in order to get it back to health again, right? Now, you know our biology has evolved over millions of years of development, right? So it's it's evolved in order to to acclimatize to the environments that we live in, right? So again the you get a you get a street dog in a in a cold mountain environment. They have long hair. If it's in a hot environment, they have short hair. Yeah, I mean it's just the way nature adapts in order for us to help us to survive because it wants us to survive, right? So, 
every biological change in our body you know dr hummer got a testicle uh, got a tumor on his testicle because his son was murdered nature wanted him to get another son to replace the son he just lost because that's a part of the survival biological process right every single every single change in your body is cause i mean you know let's let's take a bit of fun right um mm -hmm. take something and it's something you can easily test yourself right sneezing okay right. sneezing sneezing is 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 what is what dr hummer called it's a it's a healing crisis from a stinking conflict right so whenever you sneeze think back what was i just thinking about something that i dislike something i hate something that's bugging me or irritating me i was just thinking about that and as soon as you stop i <laughs> and you think about it right yeah monitor monitor your own sneezes every time you sneeze just audit your thoughts right and just say okay what was i just thinking about that 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 stinks yeah okay and you'll be able to yeah and you can you can do that you can when, when you understand what so this german doctor essentially unraveled the biological code right so not only did he find the cause and the solution to every type of cancer he found right. the cause and solution to every disease known to man right he spent his last 10 years of his life healing children with autism and down syndrome right Wow. Yeah, yeah. This, this this doctor again against many many extraordinary medical discoveries discovered that when you take a CT scan of a CT scan of your brain without contrast that you can read your entire life history on your brain right so what he did with children with say down syndrome for example is he took a he took a CT scan of their brain um, mm -hmm. when they were born to find out what caused this retarded development that uh, that clearly happened you know during pregnancy and what he discovered is that when they're born both of their hearing centers have been shut down and when both hearing centers are shut down basically what it does is it retards the development process now through a process of investigation he, he was able to isolate the the the, the loud noises um, that the fetus was exposed to could have only have happened in the first trimester of pregnancy right oh, wow. so then he started speaking to the mothers of these children and discovered he said right okay what loud noises were you exposed to in the first trimester of pregnancy and it has all sorts of random stuff like i mean like a like a chainsaw <clears throat> apparently a chainsaw which doesn't bother us right but to a fetus um whatever this big uh, <clears throat> basically the sound of a chainsaw will put a fetus in fight or flight and create a hearing conflict. And if that happens twice, um, then basically uh, the child's both hearing centers shut down. It retards the, the it retards the development process for the rest of the pregnancy. And that's when they come out with a round face, round eyes, et cetera, et cetera. And what, what Dr. Hummer did in the last, the last 10, he sadly died in 2017, right? But what he did, I think, for the last 10 years of his life, he uh, he made major major scientific breakthroughs with uh, healing with music therapy, um, mm -hmm. and ba and basically he used he used a form of music therapy to heal these children with autism and Down syndrome. Right, right. now I had a I again I have to test these things for myself. Right, so I had a before COVID I had a friend who had a highly autistic four-year-old child i mean highly autistic to the point of being almost incommunicative and very angry right yes um, now i told him about dr hummer's healing music dr hummer called this the greatest therapeutic discovery in the history of mankind and he did not use his words lightly right so uh, one of my friends so i gave him this music and and then during covid i got i got basically shut out of india for best part of the year i couldn't return right so when i came back when i left um he had a four-year-old highly autistic um or incommunicable very angry and when i came back he had this fun loving extroverted spunky outgoing cheeky five-year-old right and i'm like oh my god wow. what's happened right he said yeah yeah, yeah. He said, 
when he when he was sleeping at night time, I just played this music very, very quietly whilst he was sleeping. I've done it for the last year. And over the course of the year, slowly the autism came down and then he pulled out of the autism. And the time I got back, he was a he was a, a fun, loving, healthy, spunky five year old. I mean, wow. the, 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 the discoveries that this that this doctor made really are truly extraordinary. Um, but as I said, I don't believe anything anybody says, right? So I've spent the I've spent the last now eleven years testing these discoveries for myself to make sure that it really is the holy grail of health and wellness. And I kid you not, it is the holy grail. It's the only you can never solve a problem until you address the cause of the problem. It's the yeah. only causal therapy on this planet that I've found so far, unless there are more that I've not found. Elements of Chinese medicine have like 40,000 feet. They have they have a lot of the big picture, but not a lot of the detail. Louise Hay, she done some fabulous work. Um, Bernie Siegel. I mean, they, 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 there are some people who've done some fabulous work around the mind body healing process. But nobody has really got down into the weeds where I can say that this was caused by my inability to convince somebody of my point of view. Right. I.e., when I had an argument with my wife over American politics, I couldn't convince her. And that's what triggered this this tumor in my jaw. Right. So that's... what this doctor has done is he's outlined the cause of every disease known to man. And you can basically target any health challenge you have with a sniper's rifle. You target the cause of the problem with a sniper's rifle. And it's an absolute game changer. That's it. amazing. Now, you wrote a book, correct? You wrote a book. Um, I've, to I've done five so far. Um, this, this is, uh, I've, uh, I got the I got the news yesterday that this has just been uh, awarded uh, uh, a gold medal in the Global Book Awards in the category of medical books. Um, oh. It's uh, it, it hit number uh, one in eleven categories on Amazon. Um, wow! Yeah, so this is this book. Terminal cancer is a misdiagnosis. Um, this is an introduction to Dr. Hummer's medical discoveries. Okay, this is an introduction to the medical science. And basically, as you can read from the title, you can understand, you can start to get an idea uh, yeah. what the contents are. Now, this is an introduction to his medical discoveries. Um, I'm in the process of writing a 500 book series. Uh, uh, it's done, it's, this only tell this only uh, uh, introduce you to the whole concept of causal healing, right? And right. Sp spontaneous and cathartic healing by addressing the cause of the problem, right? Now, I'm in the process of writing one book on every disease. So this is my this is my book on atopic dermatitis. Oh um, wow! This is my book on testicular cancer. This is my book on breast cancer. Um, I'm I'm in the process of um, th this will be a 500 plus book series. All of these all of all of these disease based books can all be read for free on my website, um, which is danny carol dot com. Um, that's the Irish spelling uh, C A W R O W L. Um, but yeah, all of these books there are four up so far. I'm about to start the process of writing the Balance 500. I'll write one on each disease. They'll all be available to read for free on my website. And they're all written um, so that anybody with no prior knowledge to the subject can read, understand, and absorb them. I mean, they're literally written in like fifth or sixth grade language so that anybody can pick it up um, and understand them. And that my 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 book, Terminal Cancer and Misdiagnosis, is also written in fifth or sixth grade language deliberately mm -hmm. so that you don't there's no medical jargon or you know all of this sort of stuff you can pick it up and you can read it with no with no prior knowledge of subject um the problem with these medical discoveries i mean it's taken me 11 years so far right Trey? um and you know i i barely scratched the surface right so 
you know, I, I, I need in order to make these accessible, you need to have, you know, like a little reader's digest that takes you an hour to read, that you understand the cause of your problem, how to fix it. And that's it. Right. And all written in very simple English. Yeah. So that's that's the plan. Um, and what I'm what I'm in the process of doing. Um, this book was reviewed um, and given improvement suggestions by thousands of people. Um, uh, I could never have written this book on my own and got it to where it did. So what I'm doing is I'm building I'm building a, a collaborative community platform for everybody to come in and write these 500 books in a in a community. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully we can get all of these books up to the standard of, of this book um, and leave them behind probably for future generations. I, I, I doubt that, uh, that we're going to make huge headway in this generation, but anyway, who knows? Um, but uh, essentially I'm writing these for the future generations and I suspect in future generations, they, they will be um, the future books of medicine. I think that's an awesome idea. And I love the fact that you've written it in, you know, an, in, in a level where people can understand it, because that was my biggest thing that met me, that made me so infuriated and gave me the uh, kind of gave me the, uh, I, I guess you could say the fire to write so many books was because when I was trying to look up information about certain topics, I would, find, you know, back in the day, there was only a couple of books on, on certain, uh, you know, diseases and illnesses and disabilities. And when you did read them, they were written by doctors and medical terminology. And if you weren't a doctor, it just went over your head. So, you know, what's, where's the purpose, you know, people, you know, regular people that don't have a medical degree are not going to understand what these doctors are trying to get across the message that they're trying to provide. So you need books like that. So it could actually address, you know, the, the topic, the solution, you know, and, and, and give people a, a very simple, clear understanding of why, and this is how you solve it. So I, I commend you on that. That's excellent. And the book that you just wrote, uh, Terminal Cancer is a Misdiagnosis, can they find that on Amazon or do they go to your website for that? Uh, both. Um, the, the book is available on Amazon um, in uh, uh, paperback, hardback, Kindle format, audio format. Excellent. I, I, I narrate my own books. Um, so you can you can get that on Amazon. The other books at the moment are only available on my website, uh, danny-carroll.com. I have the, if you go to, there's a tab called The Healing Tribune which is the the, uh, the healing brand um, that I'm in the process of developing. And the tagline is the cause of disease made simple. Okay, yeah. so um, all of these, um, the other 500 books will all be under the Healing Tribune brand. Uh, none of them are more than 100 pages. They're little thin books. Mm -hmm. um, my book, Terminal Cancer, I think the reading pages it's about 60 pages, right? But it, it essentially contains what we call the cure for cancer. Uh, you can't mm -hmm. cure cancer because it's not a disease. It's the solution to cancer, right? Right. Um, but you get the solution to cancer in a in a 60-page book. Um, and then um, the other 500 books, so you go to the Healing Tribune. All of the Healing Tribune books will be free to read on my website. Um, this, is li this is life-saving information. Um, yeah. So I decided that it's too important to put behind a paywall. Um, so you can read them all on my website. You can also buy them. There is a store on my website. If you can afford to buy them, please feel free to buy them. Um, however, if you cannot, please feel free to read them on my website and learn from them. Um, right. So yeah, all of all, all five hundred books will be up on my website once they're written for for everybody to read. So you have a free download and then if you want to buy a paperback and have it in your home, they can purchase it also on your website. It's a, it, at a moment it's up as the, the books are up as, uh, up as blogs. So you, okay. can, you can, you can read the entire, you can read the entire book, but anybody is most welcome to, I mean, all, all of these books, including my main book, are, are, are written under a creative commons license, which means mm -hmm. that anybody can take my work, copy it, put their own book cover on it and sell it as their own all they have okay. to do is is to give attribution to my website um, the idea of that is to get as many people as possible 
um, creating their own book brands. And uh, you know, I mean, we've got to get this out to eight billion people, right? I mean, in my lifetime, I can never do that on my own. So right. I'm I'm hoping at some point down the line. We'll have hundreds of people selling the same books in different countries, different parts of the world, so that we can disseminate the information um, much, much faster than we otherwise would be able to. So I strongly encourage everybody to come in, copy them, take them away, sell them as your own. Um, uh -huh. and, and please Thank get you. the word, get the word spreading so that uh, so everybody can start learning the cause of their disease and how to fix it. I think that's wonderful. You know, you know, you're clearly a compassionate person and this is a cause that, you know, that is from the heart, you know, and, and I, I commend you on that. You know, you're trying to help people and, and, and better the world and help to cure illness and disease, you know, and cancer. And I, I commend you for that. Thank you so much. This has been an amazing interview and, you know, please feel free to come again. I, I loved having love you on the too. show. <laughs> Love to, Stacy. Uh, we, we can do it. We we can do another five hundred if you like. <laughs> uh, I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have barely scratched the surface, right? I mean, yes. not not yes. even scratched the surface. No. There are no scratches on the surface yet. <laughs> no. This has been an amazing conversation. Thank you so much. And, you know, I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you. And this, I just, I'm just speechless. Thank you so much. This has been great. My pleasure, Stacey. Absolute pleasure being here. Okay. You have a wonderful day. Thanks, Stacey. Same to you too.